Hello, good people of the internet, and uh, welcome to this uh, little video of mine. Um, I actually got not many, I'll be honest, but I got a few questions on Instagram if it would be possible for me to go through um, one of the tracks I did for Tripwire Interactive's Killing Floor 2 game. Uh, I did uh, a, a few tracks for them uh, many years ago. And one of the tracks was uh, Infectious, which uh, has gone on to be one of the more popular tracks of the update I did music for. So that's great, I guess. Um, I have to say, I am pretty um, amazed of that I could actually open this session because it's not, e not just a lot of years ago I did this, it's also what would be probably four versions of Cubase and a lot of Black Friday plugin deals since and a whole new computer system. So the fact that I could open this and only miss a few audio files and uh, a f minor plugins that aren't too important, um, that's pretty cool. So I can actually go through this track. Um, anyways, Let's uh, just get into the intro of this track. So basically this whole intro is just uh, a mood setter, basically. Um, and the whole intro is built with uh, Thrill by Natis Native Instruments, which is probably one of my absolute favorite virtual instruments for everything that needs a creepy atmosphere, sci-fi, horror, anything. This is really great. So that basically goes on, this little bed of music. We go into another thrill patch. Which is not one of my own patches, this is uh, one of their presets, it, lo it looks like. Um, and the cool thing about Thrill is that even, you, even though you can play it with uh, your MIDI keyboard or whatever, they have this XY pattern, I think they call it, where, where you can, you can d d just hold down one key and just de develop the, the instrument and the overall sound with this. Love it. Use it on pretty much every single whole track that I do. Anyways, let's go on. And the intro goes on and we get into the first heavy part of uh, the song. We have some low rumble somewhere. We'll get to that. So the guitars on here are basically, they are basically, as far as I remember, let's check. They are, yes, indeed, guitaric. Not even, I didn't even bother to do my own patch or settings. It's just a preset hardcore 51. And and I guess this is, is a good point in the video to, to make a, a statement, so to say. This track is a couple of good uh, years old um, from a point where I did a lot of smaller indie games and I still do, I love indie games. Um, but this is f where I didn't have much to work with and I suddenly got the offer somehow with small amounts of dark sorcery to um, basically write these uh, tracks for Tripwire Interactive for this little game Killing Floor 2 uh, and I played Killing Floor the, the original track like probably a bit too much when I was younger so this was a huge opportunity for me but I at this point as you will see as we get further I, I didn't have 
much good gear. This was also on a very bad computer, which is why stuff is bounced out to audio and so on. I'm on a much bigger system now, but at that time I didn't have much, but I still got the opportunity and I made it work. So I guess the whole message message I'm trying to get across is that it's 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 not about the gear. To a certain extent you need gear, but it's more about how you use what you already have. So keep at it. If if you're not at a point in your career where you want to be, just keep at it. It it will come if if you really want it. Trust me. So anyways, let's get on. That's the guitars. They sound like this. Sounds like absolute shite, um, mainly because my mixing at this point was really bad. But also I cut a lot of the lows, even the low hits, because there's so many low elements in this track, both bass and synth and stuff. Anyways, onwards with the bass, which as it <laughs> works with the previous statement I was talking about, I did not have a real bass at this point in my career. So that's basically just a pitched down guitar without any cool plugins or anything on it. Yeah. <laughs> Onwards. Lead guitars kinda doing the whole main melody lead thing in, in what is well probably the chorus. And that's it. That's just guitars, and that's also guitaric. Uh, same same settings as before, just with uh, a bit of reverb on it. Um, let's go on to the drums. So let's see what is going on. So it looks like I was using uh, Easy Drum at this point, which sounds okay. It's not what I would use today. I would use my own samples and my own drum kit, but that was not possible at this time. So. Looks like I also bounced out some of the tracks, for example, the symbols by themselves. So I could control these uh, without having to deal with compression and uh, equalization uh, on, on one you know, instance of each drummer. So I, I could make it work like this. And then we have uh, some of the metal kicks. I call them metal kicks, it's double bass. with way too much reverb on it oh that's funny anyways yeah let's get on and the snare from easy drum and that sounds like a very exciting gate oh well i learn a lot of stuff a lot of stuff about my past self in this and um, we go on with uh, another snare this is kind of okay so Let's go through this. This is kind of the the metal part of the drums. Works okay, but I felt uh, I needed a more bit of a steady kind of groove and a hard hitting kind kind of four on the four four on the floor feeling for this. So got this. And together with the other drums, it starts having some sort of heavy groove, I guess. Yeah, so that's basically the drums, I guess. Does anything come? No, no. Oh, we have some toms. In the very end of... No, that's not the end of the track. Jesus is long. I don't remember it being that long. Oh, anyways. We got some toms. What do they do? Oh, what a surprise. A little fill. And I even left in a freaking audio pop. This would not have made it through the cracks today. That's for sure. 
thank you. Oh, anyways, that's basically the drums. Let's get on. What's, what do we have here? Bass synth. This is where the actual low end comes from instead of, you know, what should have been a real bass. Jesus. That's a lot of 50 hertz. Oh, well. Anyways, let's see what's this. Oh, it's Retrolog. It's a, it's a Steinberg Cubase thing with... What's going on? <laughs> what's, what's going on with the UI? Oh, anyways, I guess that's what you get when you, you open projects that are four versions behind. Oh, anyways. Synthetic guitar is a preset I used. I, I think I, I probably did some tweaking on this. You can pause the video if you're interested. I don't want to look at this anymore. And then we have a Rhythmic Absinthe. This is actually a really cool synth. Uh, is it, that's also a preset that looks like I actually did some work on. Let's uh, check it out. What it does. Ah, so yeah, of course, that, that works together with the guitars, of course. Because I'm a genius. No, I'm not. That could have used a bit of EQ. But... All right. Okay. So we get into what I will call the verse, probably. Guitar does uh, a bit of a different thing. The, the the drums does, and the synth down here does, but nothing really new in in the whole spectrum of of new instruments or anything. And then we get over here to this part of the track, and we get some effects from Weaponizer. That's another great one. Krotos, shout out to these guys. Um, and I'm missing a reverse. Simple crash, I remember now. That's the only audio file that I'm actually missing. Just to, you know, give it that. And the chorus goes on, nothing new, nothing new, nothing new. And we get into another verse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a bridge, I guess this is called, yes. And we, oh, we get the mighty drum fill. The best drum fill of all time. Yeah. And then we have massive underneath, I guess. It's another preset that I seem to have tweaked a bit on. You can pause the video for it. Yep. So that's kind of my, or that was my thing, taking good sounding presets and then tweaking them to what I wanted or heard in my head. Nowadays, I just make my own because I actually, well, I, I try to think that I know what I'm doing. So this is it. This is the middle part of the track. Just like the intro, have some atmosphere or something. It's actually really simple. I remember this being more multiple layers. Oh, well, I guess you can do a lot in mixing and mastering. And we have the same effect again. Wap, wap, boom, bitch. Yeah, okay. So, mm, nothing new really. This is the end of the track. We get another, we get another verse. And I click into the bridge, of course. Verse. And we get a bridge. Oh, and we get the mighty drum fill again, it looks like. Right into the chorus. And it goes on and it goes on and it ends. And that's pretty much the track. That's it. This is the whole session. 
It's one big mess. It's, this is kind of like, you know, you get that feeling when you look in the mirror and you don't really understand what you're seeing. Yeah, that's this. Anyways, I hope that this uh, c could do anything for you. I hope this uh, was informative or you learned something. Um, you shouldn't probably do anything that I did in here because uh, it could have sounded better. But um, it was great for what it was at the time. Um, anyways, I'm not going to make any excuses for myself. If you feel like you want to watch more of my stuff, there's a red button somewhere. And um, if you have questions or anything or really just like pictures of either coffee, musical equipment or my newly acquired Baby Yoda pop figure, then follow me over at Instagram. That is pretty much it for today. Thank you very much for checking this out, I guess. Um, have a nice day. Until next time. Bye.